Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, when President Trump was elected, he pledged to fire up the US economy and bring back working-class jobs. And, of course, he never misses a chance to boast about how far he's delivered on his promises. For many voters in the area around the Great Lakes, known as the Rust Belt, it's the difference between having food on the table or not. And in 2020, they could turn out to be the judges of whether America really is great again. Kieran Jenkins reports from the town of Altoona in the swing state of Pennsylvania. Altoona was the future once, but that was 1849. A major stop on the Pennsylvania Railroad that's watched prosperity pass it by. The sort of place where Donald Trump triumphed, pledging to turn back time. We're going to keep our companies and we're going to bring new jobs back in and they're going to come roaring back in and they're coming into this area. America first. Make America great again. Now, if Donald Trump is to carve out a second path to the White House through towns like this, it won't be through promises made, but promises kept. So he's going to relentlessly talk up his economic achievements. But what will matter is how much people feel it, see it for themselves. This is busy, but it gets busier. This place fills up. At Sister Paula's soup kitchen, this counts as a quieter day. Seconds on chili, come on up. And for them, that's progress of sorts. It's improved the percentage of people that came in before. That's why I say I see a little bit of improvement. But among the hungry here are families and people wearing work IDs. Why would they need to come to see you if they have a job? Well, because they don't make enough. If you're working in a fast food place, and you're making eight or nine dollars an hour and you have three kids you'll never make it travis has one of those fast food jobs he gets just above the minimum wage which in pennsylvania and 20 other states has been stuck on the equivalent to five pounds 75 an hour for a decade i barely make enough to actually even just go out to the grocery store and buy me food and when i by the time i'm done spending my money I got barely anything, and it feels like I just got robbed. But don't assume voters like Travis are ready to desert Donald Trump. You say, you know, I'm, I'm living from paycheck to paycheck. But I'm going to vote again for the guy who's in charge of this country right now. Yeah, because I feel like he is a better president than recently what we've had, what we've, what we've seen. What do you think of Donald Trump? <laughs> He's the worst president in the whole entire universe. Well, I agree with the that. The president has unemployment at a 50-year low, but former welder Jason does not see the good jobs that I were do promised. Like the... Do you think that President Trump has kept the promises he made to this town? I believe he's a con. There are a lot of jobs now, but a lot of jobs working in a warehouse for Amazon, but nothing with uh, family sustaining wages. Salesman Chris is one of those coveted, undecided voters who backed Obama, then Trump and considers both parties imperfect. So you're worried about the Democrats giving too much away for nothing? Yeah, free universal health care, free college. Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily like that. Do you think that Donald Trump cares more about the people at the top than the people at the middle and the bottom? Yes, people at the top. He cares more about people at the top? Yeah. And that doesn't bother you as someone in the middle? Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. President Trump is counting on wealth trickling down. For some, the gains may be marginal at best. For how many will that be enough? Well, a little earlier, I spoke to the Nobel Prize winning economist and author Joseph Stiglitz, who worked in the Clinton administration. His new book advocates what he describes as a progressive capitalism. I put it to him that with US growth strong, over 3%, and unemployment low, isn't Trump economics working? Trump gave the U.S. economy a, what we call a sugar high. Uh, if you uh, reduce taxes uh, and create a deficit of the magnitude that he did, uh, yes, the economy is going to grow a little faster, but not in a sustainable way. The fact is that we will be experiencing in the next couple of years our first 
trillion dollar deficit. Just get there, a trillion dollar deficit in one year. I mean, haven't you also argued that deficits aren't necessarily a problem? They're not necessarily a problem if you spend the money well. So if you borrow money for investing in the future, uh, that makes you stronger if you invest well. Uh, every company does that, and society as a whole through the government needs to do that. But that's not what we did in uh, the tax bill that passed uh, uh, under Trump. You said America's on a sugar high at the moment. Do you think that sugar, the sugar crash is going to come before the next election or after? I'm fairly sure that it's going to come before uh, the November 2020 uh, elections. The British debate at the moment, I mean, within the Conservative Party is, you know, we, we could do all sorts of things that America has done, and then we could get that, those kinds of rates of growth. Well, first of all, the rates of growth are not a good measure of economic success. Uh, the question is, how are ordinary citizens doing? And remember, for the last 35 years, ordinary Americans have not done very well. There's been basically stagnation in the average incomes of the bottom 90%. I didn't say the bottom 10%. I said the bottom 90%. Most of that growth has gone to the top 1%, one tenth of 1%. We're in the middle of a debate between two men who want to be the leader of the Conservative Party and Prime Minister. Both of them are talking about tax cuts, tax cuts aimed at the higher end and corporate tax cuts, um, and, and freeing up, you know, the economy for the private sector to, to you know, to, to power us towards American levels of growth. I mean, are you sure that the pendulum is about to swing back your way? Well, I, I find it amazing that uh, these individuals have not learned the lesson of the last 40 years. <laughs> you know, we tried that experiment beginning with Reagan and Thatcher, and we've now had 40 years of this experiment. And the conclusions are unambiguous. Growth is lower, and what growth goes to the people at the very top, ordinary citizens do not benefit. So this is not a recipe for uh, success. And do you think your ideas are going to be where the next Democrat candidates is? Very much in, so. In America? Al almost all the candidates agree with, you know, they may not use those words, but they agree with the basic uh, tenets of what I call progressive capitalism. They realize that... A new New Deal. A new, new, new Deal, a Green New Deal. We have to worry about the environment. What does a new, you know, a Green New Deal really mean? Oh, economically, it's a huge stimulus for our economy. And one of the things I pointed out is that just like fighting World War II was a moment of transformation, which made our economy more productive. We brought women into the labor force. We urbanized our economy. It was a moment of transformation. And what I think is that we can use this moment of the uh, energy transformation, the green transformation, to do again that kind of societal restructuring that will usher in a new era of real economic prosperity. Joseph Stiglitz, thank you very much. Thank you. I've been getting